gentlemen, Fred Henry. Good evening, Bea. You know, it is truly an honor for me to be on the stage. After following so many of these academic powerhouses, I feel sort of kind of small. Uh, but it's all good. My topic is about trust. And I think this is a topic that actually impacts the nation and your citizenry, and as well as the D Department of Defense. So specifically, digital trust. What does that mean? Well, many of you know who I am. I'm Fred Henry. So if I was to ask you a test or give you a test and say, who am I, you'll probably respond Fred Henry. You know, because Fred Henry, for you to see Fred Henry, that's visual authentication. You can recognize who I am. And that's the easiest way to identify someone, and it's the most traditional way. It's facial recognition. Now, if I was to ask you again, who am I, if you didn't know me, you would not be able to determine that I was Fred Henry. And this is the challenge with the digital age. And this is the paradox of the digital age, because the lack of standards makes it much more difficult to determine who I am. Because it's difficult in the digital age, to, particularly with the growth and the acceleration of data, to authenticate, to truly authenticate who I am. Because I could be Fred Henry, or I could be Francois. You don't know. You don't know online, because people masquerade online with different identities. So what is this thing about trust? You know, trust is essential in the digital economy. And I have given you a brief definition here of trust, and I've bolded some areas of trust that really speak to what it means from a business perspective. What does it mean to provide consumers a trusted environment where their data is stored and shared, because you expect that as a citizen. You expect the government to be able to protect your data, and so when you try to obtain access to services, you want it to be uncompromised. That's what you expect as a citizen, and that's what you expect as a service member when you're trying to defend our nation. So what is this? My idea about trust is, is that we are predisposed to trust. You know, at the moment of birth, we have to rely on caretakers. And those caretakers provide, protect us. They feed us. They teach us. And at some point, we lose trust. And then, but our ability to, but we still believe in this fundamental principle of trust because we presume trust in almost everything that we do. Now, what does that mean? Because someone, I, one of the awardees was focusing on Internet of Things. And that's a significant shift in our economy. Now, the challenge within, with the Internet of Things, great promise. But the challenge with Internet of Things are the people in this room. Because you, like me, like to have hyper-personalization. You want to have authentic experiences that mean something specific to you. I want my, this little phone here, I want this thing to empower me with all the knowledge that I can obtain. The challenge is that that's creating more data, and that data is exceeding the capacity of a lot of our authentication systems, because there's no general standard. There's a wide range of standards in terms of how things are authenticated online. Internet of Things, the trend. By 2020, the trend is that 4 billion people are going to have access to the Internet. That's more than half of the population in the world. 7.8 billion represents the current population. 4 billion is half of that population. Look at the amount of volume that is being generated, projected to be generated by 2020. 50 trillion gigabytes of data. That is exceeding the capacity of many of our authentication systems. And that is important to you as a citizen when you go online. Because some of you, because you are predisposed to trust, some of you probably are too trustworthy when you're online. 
Because you have to remember online, you leave crumbs everywhere. And so when you're online doing what you do, you now some of you go on social media and you do what you do. Some of you send email and you do what you do. Some of you send photos and you do what you do. But the impact is that people analyze that data. And that has an impact on you as a citizen. It has an impact on your reputation. And it certainly has an impact sometimes on your employment because people are looking. And people are, uh, people are essentially looking for that data to analyze that data. There's a lot of data out there. And that data helps to solve societal problems. It creates competitive advantage in business. The challenge, though, there's a lot of Francois out there. And so they're also looking to hack your data. They're looking to steal your identity. And we make it easy for them sometimes. Because, like I said, cyber criminals are looking to use your fake, to use fake identities to gain unauthorized access to information through legitimate access authentication methods. And that happens because they steal passwords. Because we trust that when we send information to the cloud, that is going to be secure. And quite frankly, that is not always the case. What is the biggest problem with this information? A lot of that information is stolen, and then you become the victims through phishing. And so from a military perspective, when those days when I served in the military, a big concern was having data compromised, having system compromised by individuals and users, because the weakest link is the individual. Doesn't matter how big or how powerful your system is, it's always the lowest, the weakest link. And criminals, cyber criminals, are going to use this information to exploit you through a number of phishing methods. And so, cyber criminals, you see that there is an estimated impact on cost, 16 trillion, projected by 2021. And when you look, and that's Forbes, that's not Fred Henry speaking, that's Forbes speaking. When you look at what are they targeting, sensitive information, both for corporations and for you. And so what is needed? STEM and, and this people in this room need to help, and there's individuals that was working on any of things, we need to help improve the security. How do you improve the authentication capabilities online? Because your identity is at stake. And identity is critical in, digital, in the digital area. It's all about trust, and it's all about your digital trust. Because digital, because identity fraud is the, fasting, is the fastest rate of cyber crime right now today. And criminals want to access your personal information. So you should practice good habits and be wary of those Francois out there so what does this mean, identity theft? You can see the numbers. I won't quote the numbers. But you should look at the, the methods to protect your identity. And I would highlight the last one. Don't overshare information on social media, because people are going to be mining that data. And I said before, the weakest link, it is always the individual. The individual is the weakest link. I mean, some, you'll be amazed just how poor people practice their password. They, the lack of password discipline is you'll be amazed that some people still use password. You'll be amazed. And so why is that a problem? Because the cyber criminal is looking to compromise stolen identities through the ability to capture your password. And the computation power used by cyber criminals, because they're well financed, they, they use computation power to conduct brute force attacks, crowd, hack, crowd hacker attacks, keylogger attacks, all designed to steal your identity. Multi-authentication. There has to be improvement and more adoption of a multi-authentication type capability. Now, most of us are familiar with two-factor. There's something that you know, and then when you log on, you provide username, password, and some 
depending upon how you log on, and then you get a PIN. And then, then you're providing something that PIN back to authenticate to give you authorization. That's two factor. Three factor is biometrics, some form of biometrics. Now, some of us don't ha like to have our eyes, people zooming in on our eyes. We don't like that. And so adoption of three factors still has a little ways to go because of the biometrics. But again, it comes back to protecting data. The breaches, about 150 breaches occur each day. About 150. 81 percent of all breaches, according to the Verizon report in 2017, are, are attributed to stolen passwords. So digital trust is critical. It's important. Internet of Things is creating challenges for how you secure your data and how you secure your information. Now, if trust is, if trust is key, systems have to be protected. But systems are only as good as the weakest link. And once the trust is lost in a system, or once people lose trust in the capability of a system to be able to secure and protect data, it's hard to get the confidence and the trust back from those who have been compromised. And so in parting, I would just like to say it's all about trust. It's all about digital trust. And digital trust requires well-disciplined individuals who are accessing and sharing information to ensure that they're doing it in a way that doesn't compromise them or their organizations. Thank you.